In the next problem, we're going to graph using multiple transformations. What is the graph of f of x equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 3? Now the transformations, let's talk about the negative on the outside. This negative means it's going to be reflected around the x-axis. That just means it's going to look upside down. The 2 on the outside means that it is vertically stretched by a factor of 2. The minus 1 on the inside stands that it will move to the right. And we're going to say translated. Translated to the right one unit. And the plus 3 on the outside states that it's going to be translated. up 3. So it's going to look upside down, it's going to look like it's been vertically stretched, it's going to move to the right 1, and it's going to move up 3. The vertex is the opposite of the what's with the x, positive 1, and what's on the outside, a 3. Make your xy chart. Put your vertex in the middle, and surround your vertex by the points that correspond. So a little lower than 1 is 0 and negative 1. A little higher is 2 and 3. Plug those into the original problem. So if we were plugging in 0, we would do 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Squared is 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 3 is 1. You're just plugging in your values. If you plug in negative 1, you get negative 1 minus negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 3 is negative 5. Those are reflected down here. We did do them correctly. If you ever weren't sure, just plug them in and see if you get the same thing. Plot your points. Negative 1, negative 5 is left 1, down 5. 0, 1 is over 0, up 1. 1, 0 is right 1 up 3, or excuse me, 1, 3 is right 1 up 3, 2, 1 is right 2 up 1, I did 0, 1, 0, 1 goes here, excuse me, um, 3, negative 5 is right 3 down 5, make sure your, your points look like they make a perfect upside down U, which they do, and you have your graph. We may as well do the got it as well. <clears throat> in the got it question, it's all multiple choice. It says, what are the steps in transforming this particular graph? Well, let's talk about the negative 2 on the outside. That's going to reflect it around the x-axis. The 1 on the inside is going to move it, so that one's going to reflect. This one's going to move it to the left because it's a plus 1. This one's going to move it up. And this 2 means it's going to be vertically stretched. So if you go through your multiple choice answers, you will see that part D is the only one that talks about each and every one of those. The stretching by a factor of 2, the reflecting around the x-axis, the translating to the left, 1, and translating up, 3. Let's take a look at got it number 4. What, step, what steps transform the graph of y equals x squared to y equals 2 times the quantity x plus 2 quantity squared minus 5? All right. Well, you should notice, maybe first of all, at least what I noticed right away, is this outside 2. This outside 2 makes a vertical stretch of a factor of 2. In other words, it gets skinny. It gets twice as tall. This plus 2 moves it to the left two units. This minus 5 in the back moves it down five units. Problem 5 is going to be a little more difficult, just maybe more steps, not necessarily more difficult. Um, we're going to look at the picture, and this shows the jump ball a dolphin. What quadratic function models, it means what is the equation, 
the path of the dolphin's jump. We have to go to the jump and we have to look at what we call the most important thing, the vertex. The vertex in this problem is right three up seven. You can kind of see that that is the highest point. That means it's our vertex. Let's label it. Step one, vertex is over three, up seven. All right, step two, find another point. Okay, another point. Just look at your graph. Make sure you find something that's exactly on a corner. I noticed that over nine, up four, crosses perfectly. Um, <clears throat> when we're ready, once we have our vertex and our other point, that's kind of our starting ground. You are going to write the basic vertex equation. That's y equals a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. Just remember that h and k are the values of the vertex. All right, well, I'm going to put in h above 3 and a k above 7. That was in step 1. Let's rewrite this y equals a times the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 7. All right, well the other point is an x and a y. I'm going to write x above the 9 and y above the 4. Let's plug those in. 4 equals y became a 4. a times x minus, no, not x. Instead of writing x, I'm going to write 9 minus 3, quantity squared, plus 7. You'll notice now the only thing we have to solve for is a. Let's multiply this through. 4 equals a times 6 squared, because 9 minus 3 is 6, plus 7. 4 equals, well, 6 squared is 36a, plus 7. Subtract 7, negative 3 equals 36a, divide by 36 and reduce. That becomes negative 3 over 36, and then it has to be reduced to negative 1 over 12. So now we have the most important things. The most important things are to find h, k, and a. h and k are easy. A requires a little bit of work. Now we're just going to take this and plug it in, and we have our quadratic model, which is just an equation, and we write y equals, instead of a, I write what I got for a. In parentheses, you write x minus 3, let me square that, plus 7. And there it is. This is the vertex form. You found A, you found H, and you found K. The got it question in part five. The picture shows the jump of a dolphin. Now suppose the path of this jump changes so that x equals, changes so that the x axis, the axis of symmetry becomes x equals two, but it stays at the same height. If the path of the jump also passes through 5, 5, what is the quadratic function that would model the path of the jump? Well, you're going to do the same thing. The only difference is going to be your vertex is new. So they said the height is at 2. All right, so we're going to do 2 comma, what was it last time? 7. So we do 2 comma 7, and that's our vertex. And if you go over here, you can see that at 2 comma 7, that is where the maximum be is plus the fact that they told us that x is 2 and the height stays the same. Now they were nice in this problem when they gave us the other point of 5, 5. We're going to go through the same steps we did before. All right, we have the two most important things. Now we really have to solve for h, k, and a. Remember that h and k are easy and that a takes a little bit of work. Step 3, write the original, kind of the generic formula of vertex form y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. Plug in what you know. Well, I'm going to plug everything in all at once here. Remember that 2 is h, 7 is k, because those come from your vertex, 5 is x, and 5 is also y. All right, so this is going to become 5 equals 
a times the quantity. x is 5 minus h is 2, square it, plus k is 7. Keep filling in. 5 equals a times 3 squared plus 7. I just did 5 minus 2. 5 equals 9a, because 3 squared is 9, plus 7. Subtract 7. Negative 2 equals 9a. Divide by 9 and reduce. Negative 2 over 9 equals a. We now have h, k, and a, and we can write our final answer. y equals, fill in a, negative 2 over 9, times the quantity, and we're putting this in vertex form. x minus h, so x minus h was 2, quantity squared, plus k, k was 7. If you want to be real fancy, you can write it in function notation and write f of x equals. Not necessary, but it is in function notation.